think uh, all of us are familiar uh, with the importance of mitochondria inside of our cells and, and bringing the energy and, um, to power all of our cells, um, impacting not only our, our muscle, also our brain, immune, joint, skin. It really impacts our entire body and how, um, and how, we, and how we live. And, and, the, and it's a, a very... Um, it's a very interesting way to approach aging because you can target it so well and there's a number of interventions uh, and nutritional interventions that you can use. Uh, and, and when you think about cellular aging, it really starts with a decline in mitochondrial function. And then, you know, you see a decline in, in the cellular function. This leads to a decline in, in basically organ function and then you start to feel it. And, and if you think of um, muscle decline, uh, as you get older, you know, your muscle health starts to decline in your 30s. And then it's really heterogeneous. Uh, and, you know, what we want to all avoid is following this track here where everyone ends up, um, you know, on that track unhealthy. And we want to keep people uh, aging optimally throughout their lives. Uh, and that's what it's all about. And that's what, you know, our goal is at the company. And so there's a, a number of ways to promote mitochondrial health that can help us uh, while we age and help uh, promote uh, our health span. And one, of course, is dietary interventions. We've all heard about intermittent fasting uh, and how this can have an important effect, but this is perhaps not always appropriate. Um, also eating various um, polyphenol and antioxidant-rich diets. Um, there can be aspects of the bioavailability of some of these antioxidants. And then exercise. Um, exercise is a great way to sort of stimulate um, mitochondrial biogenesis. And then, of course, uh, in addition to these um, lifestyle um, changes, we can also uh, try and take some supplements and, that are interacting on, at the cellular level on your mitochondria. And today we'll be talking about urolithin A. And so Dominic uh, gave a little bit of an overview on the origins of urolithin A, but I'll dive a little bit deeper into that. So uh, if you're thinking about um, the pomegranate, which is one of the, comp one of the, um, the products, natural products, that is, is really delivering the most urolithin A, uh, it contains uh, compounds called elagitanins, which are very complex compounds. And when you consume them, what happens is the gut microflora transforms them into a postbiotic that's called urolithin A. And uh, unfortunately, we don't all have the right gut microflora. So it's only about 30 to 40 percent of the population that can actually convert these elagitanins into urolithin A. And what we've seen, um, and one of the discoveries that we made uh, uh, early on was that urolithin A is actually stimulating and improved mitochondria health in cells. And we did a deep dive to understand how that really worked. And what we saw was that it was stimulating this process called mitophagy. And so how does mitophagy improve mitochondrial function? So uh, this is a nice uh, cartoon that really oversimplifies the process. But essentially, you know, as you're getting older, the cell's uh, natural process uh, for maintaining mitochondrial function uh, is decreasing. And, that's, uh, and this process is called mitophagy. And so what mitophagy does is, is take a damaged mitochondria and then it, it takes it into a recycling uh, stage where the damaged one is engulfed in, and then it is recycled. And then the components are then used to sort of rebuild healthy uh, mitochondria inside the cells. And as we get older, mitophagy level start decrease in our cells, and as we're more sedentary as well. And so what you really need to do is to boost that level of mitophagy to sort of kickstart the cells so that they can uh, continue to maintain healthy mitochondrial populations. So we've done a number of studies, and this is work that uh, was published uh, together with Professor Johan Oerx uh, back uh, a number of years ago in 2016 uh, in Nature Medicine. And this is where we uh, really took a deep dive on urolithin A and tried to understand uh, how it was impacting mitophagy, also how, what were the benefits were uh, in various uh, animal models. And we looked at, uh, we started looking at worms and then we moved on to um, onto rodents. And what we saw was that uh, when we gave 
that one of the precursors to urolithin A, ellagic acid, we saw there was no impact on the uh, lifespan of worms, C. elegans. And then when we administered uh, urolithin A, we see an impact of about 45%. Uh, and there was also a whole series of studies looking at, at all the pathways involved with mitophagy and knocking them down to, to prove that, in fact, um, this life extension was due to uh, mitophagy. And, you know, it's interesting just to take a look at, you know, the impact of uh, mitopure versus other sort of lifespan interventions that have been explored out there. And, of course, caloric restriction uh, remains the gold standard. Um, but right after caloric restriction, we see um, urolithin A. And then we see metformin, which is a drug, and, and a lot of others, um, including, um, you know, rapamycin, spermidine, and resveratrol, fall significantly lower in that. And so we went, you know, we went from worms, obviously, into, um, into rodents and into mice, and, and we showed some benefits on, on mice. In fact, I'm going to show some, it's actually some unpublished data that's, um, that was recently uh, performed by, um, by one of the scientists at uh, Timeline, uh, Julie Fage. And, and so uh, looking at uh, older uh, mice, 20 months, 21 months old, uh, and, and giving uh, urolithin A for a period of eight weeks. And, you know, we always talk about improving of mitochondrial function, but, you know, what does that look like? Well, she took a, a, a deep dive and looked at that uh, using EM. And, and what you can see here is that, you know, the mitochondrial volume in old uh, animals, uh, in the muscles of old animals, uh, decrease um, uh, significantly, but when you treat those animals with urolithin A, uh, you get a restoration there. And then also in, the, in terms of the mitochondrial complexity, in terms of how the mitochondria connect and interact with one another. So that was pretty, um, pretty exciting. And, and she came up with a, a very uh, cool little cartoon here. This is from one, uh, a sample from one of the soleus muscles. And so you can see sort of the difference in complexity uh, here. Um, so here on the, on the right, you see old plus urolithin A and highly complex structure. And on, on the left, you see the old plus vehicle where the mitochondria are more sort of uh, spread out. We also uh, looked at other muscle types, um, including the gastrocnemius uh, muscle. And, uh, and so this is, you know, it's really exciting data uh, and, and will be uh, publishing. So this is not yet out there. Um, so... Uh, Yes, it, it impacts mitochondria function, also impacts um, muscles function. Uh, we saw in a number of rodent models how it improved uh, running, uh, increased, increased running by uh, over 50%, increased running endurance. Uh, and this also translates into humans. And, it, and so it's really nice that it's, it's translating across species. Um, when we, we've run a number of clinical studies now in humans, uh, our first clinical study uh, uh, we looked at the impact on mitochondrial function by taking biopsies before and after the study and, and looking at gene expression analysis. And if you look on the left side um, uh, panel on trial one, you can see the placebo, 500 milligrams and one gram of uh, urolithin A. And what you can see is a dose-dependent uh, increase in the expression of mitochondrial uh, genes. Um, and so that, you know, sh that really encouraged us to go forward and, and run a number of other studies. And so we run, ran a second study in uh, middle-aged um, uh, adults who were uh, sedentary and overweight. And we showed that uh, administering both um, either 500 milligrams or one gram uh, was increasing the um, muscle strength of the leg uh, after a period of four months. And then in a third trial, Looking at adults, uh, 60, uh, older adults, 65 and older, uh, we looked at a, a dose of one gram, and we see an improvement after two months in the muscle endurance in the, in the hand, the first interosseous muscle, and also in the leg muscle. Um, so we see a, a very consistent impact on mitochondria and actual functional outcomes on, on muscle We've also recently uh, conducted a study looking at um, muscle recovery um, where we see a nice effect there and, and that hasn't been published yet. And so you've already heard from Dominique of all the efforts we've made on, um, on, on the immune system. And, and we've, we've also 
Uh, we've also moved into topical applications because, of course, our skin, um, as Luke was saying yesterday, is our largest organ of our body, and and you know, it all our skin cells also uh, contain. Uh, mitochondria and, and we're exposed to the sun and so uh, if you look at, at the left panel you can see basically um, this, is, this is coming from um, from a, a publication aging cell uh, it's not ours but uh, what you see is a decline in mitochondrial gene expression uh, as uh, people get older in the skin which isn't a surprise because we see the same thing uh, across all the other muscle tissues and and what we see ex vivo uh, as we give uh, urolithin A at increasing doses, we see, a, we see a, a, a boost of various gene sets that are linked to um, uh, autophagy, mitophagy, also um, to mitochondrial function. And, and we've done now uh, several randomized clinical studies in humans. Uh, and on the right panel, what you can see is uh, the fact that uh, people taking uh, urolithin A for eight weeks we improve actually the, um, the the wrinkles, the structure on the face, um, uh, and that's uh, it's really uh, part of the fact that you're uh, you're improving uh, the biological function of the cells, and also that's the collagen production as well, and that helps maintain the whole matrix. and And on the uh, the second panel on the right, we ran a study looking at um, UV exposure on uh, of tissue. Uh, and we see that we're able to dampen inflammation uh, following that. Um, and so we also have um, uh, other, there's a number of applications, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we impact uh, joint health. And this is preclinical work that's been um, either published or uh, are in the process of publication on joint health. We did some work together with uh, Scripps a few years ago, and we showed uh, a key impact there in joint cells as well as heart health, and, um, and that's a study that uh, Davide Demico has been uh, overseeing and will be published soon, uh, and uh, showing improved uh, heart uh, during uh, her function during aging. Mm -hmm.